Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway and welcome back to yet another review. As you can see this time it's a yet another Hornby Railroad locomotive. This time the beautiful uh, LNER Hunt class locomotive or D49 as it's probably uh, better known. And uh, these were designed by Sir Nigel Gresley and they first appeared on the LNER uh, in 1927. Uh, and as I say, they were also known as the Hunt class, uh, and that's because some of them were named after famous fox hunts, uh, which I think is a little bit random, uh, but still uh, quite interesting nonetheless. Uh, in total, there were 76 of these engines produced over a period of about eight years, and uh, sadly only one of those uh, survived into preservation and the rest have been scrapped, uh, which is of course a shame. And here's the loco, and as you can see, it's a gorgeous uh, Hornby uh, 440, uh, and as you know, I do like those very much. And this is in fact the final uh, Hornby Railroad 440 uh, that I've got to unbox. Uh, there was only four of them, uh, that was the schools class, the county class, the compound, and uh, this one, the D49. Uh, so of course that begs the question, uh, which one uh, do you guys or girls uh, prefer the most? Uh, which one do you like best? So the question should have popped up above there, uh, feel free to answer it, and it should be quite interesting to find out uh, which one uh, you lot prefer of those four. Uh, but still, let's take a look at this box. As you can see, first of all, this one is DCC fitted. Now, I don't know if they did a DCC ready version uh, or not, uh, but for some reason this one was fitted. Uh, none of the others I have are, uh, but that's a really nice touch. And uh, as you can see, there's the loco, beautiful LNER green loco. You can't see it too well uh, because of the glare, but you can just about make out the running number there, which is 238. Uh, but you'll see her a lot better once we get her out of the box. Uh, let's take a quick look at the end of the box. As you can see, you've got R3296X, D49-1 Hunt class, the Burton decoder fitted. And yes, as you can tell there, uh, this one is called the Burton. Uh, you can't really see it, but there's the little nameplate there. I'll show you that in a little bit more detail later on anyway. Uh, but yeah, let's get this one out of the box then. I'll just slip this out, and we'll see what we've got inside. Although by now you probably have a pretty good idea because they're all basically the same uh, in terms of packaging and whatnot. But yeah, here we've got two pieces of packaging this time. The first one, of course, I won't spend long on because it's just uh, the decoder uh, information. And you get one of those with every decoder you buy. Uh, but as you can see, it's just uh, a lot of guff. <laughs> not, not much use, to be honest. Uh, but yep, that's that. And then second up, you've got the usual uh, operating and maintenance instructions. Uh, as I said earlier, for the compound, county, hunt and schools class. And if I get this open, you can just see on the back there, it's just the general servicing information, where to put the oil, how to get the tender body off, which is, believe me, one heck of a job. Uh, I've tried it a couple of times, and uh, it doesn't work as easily as they say it does on the instructions. Uh, and of course, there's also the uh, decoder fitting, which is quite important. Uh, but yep, no need for that though, because this one is already fitted. So if I just lift this uh, little front piece of plastic, uh, the first thing you can see uh, is the detail pack. Well, I don't know, the first thing you should see is the logo, of course, and there it is. Uh, but yep, the detail pack is just the usual Railroad 440 detail pack with just two vacuum pipes, uh, which is quite nice, I suppose, if you want to fit those with the kids or whatnot. Uh, but yep, you can put those on if you want to. I don't tend to, but of course, they're there. Uh, one has the choice. And uh, here you go, the loco is in a piece of plastic, so I'll take that out now, uh, if I just slip this out. Uh, and there's little holes in the back that you can just push them out of. There we go. And it's come out with all the plastic, of course. I'll just put that down. Uh, and here we go, let me just flip this over. There you go. What a beautiful model. Really, really affordable, but still really, really beautiful. Uh, really, really lovely, of course. In that fantastic Eleni livery. And uh, yep, yeah, as you can see, Really gorgeous. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take it up onto the white background now for you and uh, I'll show you her in a little bit more detail. So yep, I'll get onto that now. All right, so there's the D49 looking absolutely gorgeous as you can see there against the white background. And I bought this one just after Christmas uh, for £55, uh, which is a bargain really when you consider that uh, the decoder on its own really is worth £15. Uh, so I was really pleased with that and already it's really one of my favorites. It just is so, so smart. And uh, of course, regardless of the detail, um, the paint job is enough uh, to make this loco absolutely gorgeous. Of course, it's in the traditional LNER green, as you can see, uh, which always looks smart. Uh, but of course, you've got this gorgeous uh, white lining on the boiler, as you can see, uh, which is just done so, so neatly. Uh, and it really, really is finely applied. So as I say, regardless of detail, the paint job is fantastic. If we take a quick look at the side of the cab, you can see the running number there, 238, uh, really nicely applied. And also, just above there, you've got a glazed window, which for, you know, a railroad model is, uh, is a really nice thing to see. Uh, so, yep, a fantastic sign of quality there. 
And uh, finally, while we're just looking at the painting and such, um, the Burton nameplate, as you can see, is really, really nicely done. Uh, and as you can see, there is a little, what looks like a fox there or something. So I suppose the Burton must have been a fox hunt then. Uh, but as you can see, it's been really nicely applied. And it's a bit of something different to see on a nameplate as well, which is nice. And also the detailing is pretty good as well in terms of, you know, separately fitted or moulded detail. First of all, you've got the handrail, um, which as you can see, goes all along uh, the boiler and across the smoke box front. And you've also got, of course, in terms of separately fitted parts, you have got uh, the whistle on the top there and the two safety valves, uh, which appear to be brass, uh, which is a really nice thing as well, um, because the plastic ones really don't look quite the same. And let's look at some of the moulded detail then. First of all, there's not a terrible amount of rivets on this model, uh, but the moulded detail isn't really too bad. Uh, there's a few turning wheels, as you can see, just under the smoke box there, uh, which are nicely moulded. And uh, around the front, there's a little bit of detail on the smoke box door, uh, but the buffer beam is pretty plain, and the buffers on there aren't sprung or anything like that so you know you can see where the detail lacks a little bit but you know it's supposed to really it's a, a railroad model uh, but you know a little bit of you know say the running number on the front somewhere would have been a nice touch uh, but not to worry um, on the roof of the cab there is a little bit of detail there and as you can see there are some rivets there uh, but there aren't many on the rest of the loco really and uh, if we take a look quickly inside the cab you can see there is a lot of nice cab detail there but as you'd expect none of it is painted unfortunately uh, but what this model does offer is the gorgeous Walshirts valve gear. You can imagine it will look very, very attractive once it's running. And of course all the wheels are done in Eleanor green, which is quite a nice feature too. And if we move on to the tender, you can see that it's been painted similarly well uh, in the same LNER green livery uh, with the white lining, which looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, the gold LNER lettering, uh, really well applied. And the tender's surprisingly well detailed as well. You know, the undercarriage, uh, the moulding is pretty good, as always. And you have got a few separately fitted handrails at either end there. And especially on the back, you've got a little bit of moulded detail as well as yet another handrail. And as you can see, the coal is a little bit large scale, and uh, as always with these Railroad 440s, um, it does sort of pile up a little bit, and that's because uh, Hornby used to do, uh, many years ago, um, a tender-driven version of this uh, in their Hornby Railways range. And this uses the exact same um, moulding and the exact same casting and whatnot, except that the motor is now in the locomotive, and because it's a little bit dated, they just, you know, name it the Railroad range and uh, re-release it. And I have got one of the old tender-driven uh, D49s, and uh, I'll show you that later on in the video uh, to compare it with. Uh, but generally, a really, really smart locomotive. You know, the detail is minimal. Of course it is. It's supposed to be, really. Uh, but that doesn't stop it from being really, really attractive. Uh, a really lovely addition to any layout, of course. And uh, a really good bargain, uh, as in my case. But even if you paid full price, you know, less than £100 for a DCC-fitted locomotive. And one that's as smart as this really can't be bad, can it? So anyway, uh, let's give her a little bit of a performance test then. Let's see how she performs. Of course, DCC-fitted, she should be nice and smooth. Uh, but we'll put that to the test, and uh, you'll see for yourself. So, yep, let's give that a go. Okay, so there she is, the lovely D49, down onto the tracks. And I will do a little performance test and whatnot with her in just a second, uh, but first I thought I would show you a little comparison between her and the older version, uh, which was uh, about 30, 40 years ago, uh, and it was a tender driven version. So let me just move this one back, uh, very slightly. There we go. Not too far, mind. And uh, let's bring the other one into the shot. There you go. And as you can see, they're very similar. I think the livery is certainly better on this new version. Uh, but there are a few detailed downgrades, I think, uh, on this railroad version. First of all, you haven't got uh, the reversing rod, as you can see, in the little box that that connects to, which is a shame. And in other areas, like, uh, there's no running number on the buffer beam, uh, which is a bit of a shame as well. So as you can see, it certainly had a little bit of a detail downgrade. Uh, but yeah, do let me know uh, which one do you think is best. And uh, we will get on with that. So let me just take this uh, old version out of the way. There we go. I haven't got the tender on there, of course. Um, because that would interfere with the DCC system and it would probably fry it. So let me bring this one back into the shot. And as you can see, she's pretty good um, at performing uh, at slow speeds. Um, that's a pretty good slow speed. But if I slow her down a little bit more, you can see that she starts to jolt. And she's not that great at slow speeds. And uh, she doesn't have a great deal of weight to her, unfortunately, too, which means she also runs a traction tyre, uh, which is a little bit bad. So the performance isn't terrible. Once you get up to a speed like that, let me reverse her again. Um, once you get up to a speed like that, uh, it's really not all that bad. Uh, but at very, very slow speeds, it's not brilliant. Anyway, let me show you what she's going to be coupling up to in a second. She's got some LNER teak coaches, 
uh, which should look lovely with her, uh, being an LNER locomotive of course. And across on the other line I've got the Midland Compound, which was the last 440 uh, railroad model that I unboxed, and she's just got four uh, lovely LMS coaches, which should look fun uh, with her. And uh, yep, let's get this uh, Hunt class or the D49 up and running. And of course I'm using my iPad for this one uh, because it's DCC, so uh, that's great because I can move um, all around the room. So yep, we'll get on with that and uh, we'll see how she runs. There we go. Not too quick. Just backing up to those coaches. And yep, she looks lovely coupled to those, uh, as you probably expect. Uh, so yep, let's take her off. And it might be that I'll get some more coaches uh, onto her later, just to really test the pulling power. Uh, but let's give her a little bit more speed, get her up to more of a passenger speed. There we go. Alright, and we'll start up the Midland compound as well then, and see how she gets on. Oops, not backwards though. <laughs> there we go. And of course those four coaches should be just fine with her. Alright, let's watch them go then, shall we? Looking really smart with all those coaches. It's great to get the LNER teaks out every now and again. And I will be adding even more coaches to that as the video goes on. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what she can pull. And there's the Midland Compound. Another favourite of mine. Of course, I uh, reviewed her for my 1000 subscriber special, uh, which was a lot of fun. Okay, so now I'll move on to my ratings for this smart little model. Uh, first of all, detail, 7 out of 10. The detail's generally not bad, especially for a railroad model. Uh, but you can tell that there's been a little bit of a downgrade, especially when you compare it to the same model, uh, but from 30, 40 years earlier. Uh, performance, again, it's not terrible, but it's not that great either. You know, the Loco is a little bit light. It does have to run a traction tyre, which you know I don't like. Uh, it's not all that smooth at slow speeds, despite the DCC chip. And uh, it is a little bit, a very, very little bit uh, jolty uh, when it runs along. And uh, it just could do with a little bit of uh, tweaking, you know, just to improve the performance slightly. Uh, but character, though, is absolutely fantastic. It's a gorgeous little model, as you can see. And it really does have its own charm, so I can really recommend uh, you getting one of these uh, just for that, really. Uh, build quality, again, the railroad range is probably some of the best build quality we see from Hornby. Uh, far better than the railways range. Uh, so, yeah, pretty good mark for build quality. Um, again, value, uh, less than £60, including a DCC chip, brand new, uh, you really can't go wrong, so really high marks of value there, and if you can get one, you know, for £70 even, uh, that really is fantastic value, so yeah, high marks of value, so overall, uh, 7 out of 10, certainly not bad, definitely a nice loco, uh, but with a couple of smaller drawbacks, uh, which might put you off, I'm not sure, uh, but yeah, certainly not a bad loco, and uh, pretty, pretty good overall. Alright, so you may have noticed I've got a few more coaches lined up here, and I'm going to get the D49 to couple up to those. Uh, so an extra four uh, will make her up to nine coaches, 
uh, which should be a real test of strength for her. So here she comes now, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop her once she gets uh, well, once the last coach passes that point, and then uh, I'll reverse her in and see if she'll pick those up. So yeah, let's see how this goes anyway. Uh, I'm just going to need to stop her about now. There we go. I'll go and flick that point, and then we'll pick those up. See how it goes. All right, let's see how she gets on then. Now I haven't tried this, so I'm hoping it's going to go well. Uh, but here we go. She's just backing up, and you know that's probably the one good thing about the traction tire. It means she can pull quite a few coaches without having derailing issues, which is great. Uh, so anyway, she seems to be coupled to those. Hopefully, nothing's derailed, and um, we'll just pull her forwards and uh, see if everything comes out the way it should. Uh, so it all seems to be moving, which is a good sign. Let's speed her up. And it looks as though she's managed to do it. Yep, as you can see, she's managing all that just fine. And uh, it's really been a long time since I've run those old teaks. Uh, so it's nice to uh, get those out and get them running again. So, yep, hope you enjoy seeing those. And that really is a very, very big long train now, as you can see. You'll see just how long it is. Not bad for a 440, certainly. Well that's about it for today then everybody, uh, it really is quite good fun uh, to get some railroad locos out once in a while and uh, they do run great as you can see and if you've enjoyed seeing them as well please don't hesitate to leave a like uh, on the video or even a comment because I love to get some feedback from you guys as you probably know and otherwise you could check out the Facebook or Twitter pages if you want to at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains it would be lovely to see you on there, but for now, everybody, a big thank you to you all for watching, as always, and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.